thought I would just make a quick little video here. Hopefully this works. I like using my candlestick to prop up my little phone. I used to have a stand, um, but I borrowed a really nice stand from our church and I can't find my other mini stand that I have. So I just use the candle. So I had somebody comment on one of my videos where I was sharing the reign of grace and they're asking me, um, since diving into the Bible basically over the last year, how has my prayer life been? This is an interesting question. I'm glad you asked me. I thought about that over the past, you know, few days where I will <clears throat> run into people where I will share with them, you know, we're talking about devotions and stuff, and I'll share with them how much of the Bible I am consuming. Um, and then usually what happens is they'll say something like, um, that's a lot, or I need to read more, or I don't have a devotion life or anything like that. I should probably start, um, or I have a book for you that you could read that will help you understand a bit more what you're reading or whatever it is they'll they'll give little things this seems to be a pattern that comes up over and over again and some people are convicted because maybe they don't read at all whatever it is <clears throat> that's not my intention is to convict anyone um but i would say it's more to encourage people to read more because what i have found is after consuming the Bible, like I said, almost seven times, I've actually slowed down now. I've slowed down because I was at a point where I was reading the Bible every single month. And then I began diving into the epistles of Paul. So I've been doing that probably, I would say, in average is almost all 13 epistles every single day I've been listening to, which is kind of interesting. So what I do is in the morning, I'll spend a couple of hours, like it's five o'clock right now, it's Sunday morning. I'll spend a couple of hours reading and now I get made fun of for highlighting my Bible too much, that kind of stuff. So, which, which is fun. People are starting to know me as the Bible reader guy. So if you knew me a year ago, you would not, probably wouldn't recognize me because I would spend maybe five minutes a day reading the Bible. And like I've shared in some of my other videos, I would get sleepy. I'd jump into the book of Leviticus <clears throat> and get a little sleepy and be like, I need a good nap tonight, so I'll jump into Chronicles or something, fall asleep. It was bad, it was bad. Got to the point where my son would make fun of me and he'd be like, Dad, you should read this once in a while. And I'd always have it on the table and I'd push it aside, have a bowl of cereal, whatever it is. And I'd be like, I'm going to get back to that tomorrow. I'm going to read 15 minutes. Next day, I promise, next time I'm going to read you maybe 30 minutes. I got to make up for the previous day. So that is something that I struggled with for eons. It felt like eons. And then last year, about January, my wife began to pray for me and said, Lord, give this man a hunger for your word. That was basically it. She didn't tell me she prayed that. And then Russia invaded Ukraine. And I started reading, and again, I won't go into detail, but I started reading the book of Revelation, didn't understand anything, went over to the book of Romans. And as I was jumping into Romans, I noticed my old King James Bible that I hadn't opened in probably 30 years. I'm like, oh, I'm going to open this thing up. And I noticed that it was in giant print. And I also noticed that there was no Bible references. 
no commentary, that kind of stuff. Well, this is kind of cool. So I put my New Living Translation aside, <clears throat> and I started reading the King James, and I would read the Book of Romans every day for a month. Every day. It took me about, first time it took me about an hour or so to read the Book of Romans. Now it takes me about 20 to 30 minutes to read the Book of Romans. And I go through it pretty fast because I'm familiar with the book and I'm looking for things in it as well. And I read it just for pure enjoyment. And then I'll just go right through to uh, the end of what is the last Hebrews, I think, is what I'll, I'll go into. But I'll, I'll usually end at, I'll just look at the table of content here. Usually finish with Philemon. That would be the last one. And then uh, and then sometimes I'll jump into Hebrews to Revelation. That's kind of my pattern. But right now it's, it's basically Acts to the end of Philemon. And I just do it over and over and over again. Because I, I really feel <clears throat> inspired to read those portions. And then also during during the morning, I'll um, I'll go through like the book of Daniel, and I'll bounce around quite a bit. So this is what I've been doing as of the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> Before that, it was just consistently just going through the Old Testament, New Testament, Old Testament, New Testament. I say all that because what has happened is. Because I dived so much into the Word of God and I didn't care what anyone said. Because people were, were arguing with me to slow down. <clears throat> They're like, Shane, that's too much. You're not going to learn anything. You're not going to get anything out of that. You have to slow down. Read one chapter a day. Take you a year to get through the Bible. I was like, nope. Then something happened. A couple of breakthroughs where... Um, how I think changed, which is interesting. As in, if a thought came in that didn't line up with the scripture, let's just say, I don't know, maybe there's a magazine or something on the cover, like a, a Fortune magazine or something, I would bounce my eyes right away and go into another aisle or if an attractive woman walked by or whatever that kind of stuff i would i would capture that thought right away and i'd be like no i'm i'm dead to that i'm happily married all this kind of stuff and then i would figure out why that thought entered my mind sometimes it could be my wife and i have been busy for the past two three three weeks not able to be intimate and then <clears throat> did i <clears throat> did i have breakfast that morning did I have lunch? Was I hungry? Um, thirsty? Whatever it is, um, I, I would take that and capture that and then I would understand it and I, I would take it to the Lord right away. And i talk about it. I'm like, this is interesting why this emotion is stirring up. Like maybe somebody said something or did something in traffic or whatever and I would be like, Huh, that guy is not driving the way that he should be driving. And I'd be like, why is this bugging me a bit? And I'm like, hmm, that's an interesting thing. Just, it's more, you're having a realistic conversation now with the Lord. That's what I'm trying to communicate. And it's daily. Before it used to be convictions. Lots of convictions like you shouldn't be dwelling on those thoughts. You shouldn't be thinking those things or you should be reading the Bible. I used to have those kind of thoughts. Now, <clears throat> what I feel the Holy Spirit saying to me throughout the day is things like uh, make sure you do everything with sincerity. So I would, you know... It'd be silly things like 
<clears throat> I would shake hands. Oh, one time I was in church, we had two services, uh, morning, early morning, later morning. And for whatever reason, both my wife and I ended up uh, going to the church um, for both services. She's a pastor. And I was like, okay, uh, it's probably easier for me to drop you off, go for coffee, and I ended up staying for both services. When I was in the service, we have a time where it's like a minute or so where you shake people's hands. And I thought, I am going to uh, go on the other side of the church and shake as many people uh, hands as possible because um, I usually don't go over to that side of the church because by the time 30 seconds or a minute's up, you got to get back to your seat. So I walked over to that side with shaking hands and stuff. <clears throat> and my wife was actually helping give announcements that morning. And I didn't realize what people were basically, almost everyone was... Uh, had sat down and I was still shaking hands and my wife's like uh, and as you could see my husband is still shaking people's hands <laughs> I didn't realize that was happening so I went and sat down <clears throat> and then later after the first service I was talking to a bunch of friends and then uh, one friend came up to me and we we're just chit-chatting and stuff and I asked him I said oh are you going to did you, are you just coming out of the first service or are you going into the second service? And he was like, you shook my hand in the first service. You should know that I was in the first service. And uh, he's like, are you just going through the emotions? And it was kind of like a trailed off conversation like, oh, you shook my hand. I was in the first service or were you just doing that as just kind of nonchalantly or whatever I forget how he said it but it was like it was almost like a, a bit of a dig as in what were your intentions behind shaking everybody's hand and I thought that's kind of interesting that someone noticed that that that's what they thought I was doing and then the Holy Spirit kind of pricked my heart a little bit and said yeah like don't just go through the motions of stuff which I thought I was not doing, but I was doing. I was trying to see if I could shake as many people, shake as many hands as possible. So I wanted to, I wanted to be able to show people that they are welcome at the church. And I didn't want anybody to be missed. That's kind of how I approach it. But then when I came to one of my friends, I just patted him. I remember patting him on the shoulder, looking at him in the eye and shaking his hand. And that was the guy that said, are you just going through the emotions? <clears throat> going through the motions. I say all that because my peripheral vision is starting to enhance or go up, if you will, where... I'm bringing things to the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit is bringing things to me that I never paid attention to before. Because before it was like struggling with anger issues, struggling with lust issues, all this kind of stuff would go on. And now it's, it's kind of like fine tuning stuff. It's like, why do I do the things that I do as in if I'm shaking someone's hand or if I'm going out for coffee with a guy, like, why Why am I doing that? What's, what's the purpose? What's the reason for it? And this is what I'm being challenged on every single day. <clears throat> the biggest thing is I don't want to put stumbling blocks in front of people. I don't want to say stupid things where it creates a stumbling block for someone. You know, like, I'm... I'm free to drink whatever I want. I'm free to do whatever. Like that—that that is a stumbling block for some people, because then they look at you as being religious, or uh, you're giving them an excuse to go out and drink. There are people that are just like that. You say something, they go, "Oh, I'm going to go do that, whatever." So, because now I am 
put in charge, if you will, of the men's ministry. I don't know how many men we have. Probably have three, four hundred men. And now in some ways I'm, I'm accountable uh, to them to guide the men, if you will, to direct us in some way. So what I do now is I, I try and take everything to the Lord, capture every thought, all this kind of stuff, because I'm also held accountable to the Lord um, because men are watching as well. They watch everything you do, every word that you say, all this kind of stuff. And then obviously on my YouTube channels and all this YouTube channel, which is interesting. So I know that's a little bit of a ramble, but just to give you an idea of how sensitive I am to making sure that I'm not offending anyone. And yet there will be times where I will offend somebody. It just, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Somebody's going to get hurt their feelings hurt or whatever it is because maybe um, five minutes late for coffee or something like that. Something, even though I'm paying for the coffee or I've, I've paid for their dinner several times, whatever it is. And sometimes I'll be hurt over that, whatever it is. So these are the things that I deal with on a daily basis uh, aside from my full-time job that I have. So when it comes to prayer, I have to get better at spending time praying in the morning. Now, because of this video, I spent about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes in prayer. And what has changed in my prayer life, I would say, would be I don't ask for silly things. Meaning, meaning. I'm not asking for stuff like, I need a better pair of shoes, or um, could the Blue Jays win today, or could you give us one more victory for the Blue Jays or something, or I don't know, just silly stuff. I find what I, how I pray now is more like, Lord, can you, help me understand your word a little bit more today can you help me remember your scripture so that when i read it it sticks more this is this is what i pray i pray for my wife you know i love my wife i think she is absolutely amazing in every way very attractive lady beautiful and smart intelligent wiser than anyone that I know. She's the most organized person on the planet. I can go on and on about her. I have three amazing kids, so I pray for them. Um, I pray for the men in general, for the church, that they would get a hunger for the word. Um, what else do I pray? I pray for my finances. I pray that I would be out of debt because that's the only thing right now that feels like it's, it's, I don't wanna say it's hindering my walk. It's not hindering, it's just, you know, we, we have a mortgage. I bought this home three months ago, or three months ago, three years ago. And it's increased in value. I love our home and everything like this, but you always think, you know, it'd be great to have this mortgage paid off. You know, we have a car payment and just little things like that. So it would be nice to be at a point where you don't have to pay for any of that stuff more. Because I do have friends that are about my age, maybe a little bit older, that are totally debt-free, totally debt-free. And they've been on it ever since I can remember. And I was not on it ever since I can remember. I was kind of frivolous. I don't know if that's the right word. I wasn't as careful with my money as I probably should be. Like, uh, I don't drink, I don't gamble, all this kind of stuff. Don't smoke, whatever, all this. But I do have other habits. Like, I don't mind eating out, um, going to a movie once in a while, that kind of stuff. But 
pretty much it. Like, um, I buy audiobooks, that kind of stuff. So it's not crazy, my spending, but I think about that. I think about it. It'd be like, it'd be cool to be out of debt, like not to have any debt. That's what I think about sometimes. That'd be so cool. So anyways, these are the things that I pray about versus asking God for specific things like, uh, I don't know. I, I used to be like, ask, 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 ask. Now I feel like because I am focused on the Lord throughout the day, as soon as I wake up, my Bible's on the banister, I grab it, I come down, I make a cup of coffee, I open the Bible, I start reading. And I do this all day. I'll listen to the Bible all day long. Probably, I would say, 90% of my day feels like it's consumed by either reading or listening to the Bible. And then once in a while, I will jump onto YouTube and watch someone's rendition or interpretation of something out of the Bible or I'll watch random videos every once in a while of uh, people's YouTube channels, that kind of stuff. But that's pretty much the majority of my time, uh, mentally, I should say. So I don't know if that helps. You get a picture of what, what I do during the day. Now, I want to spend more time in prayer where I am actually just having the Bible right beside me, but I'm just focusing on the Lord, which is interesting to do that. I haven't been very good at doing that, being able to just sit still for like an hour and do nothing. And I shouldn't say do nothing. It sounds weird, right? But to be able to just pray for an hour straight, that I have not been able to do. Instead, I have a conversation throughout the day where I'm asking the Lord, you know, what about this, you know, how, uh, what about this verse or this scripture or what's it going to be like in heaven? What are you going to have us doing? All those, those are the types of conversations that I have during the day, including things like help me to say the right thing in season and out of season. So I find I'm inviting more people to church. I'm able to share the gospel, if you will, of Jesus Christ uh, on a bit more of a regular basis with whoever. It could be a complete random stranger. It'd be something like somebody will um, come up to me or I'll come up to that person. We're just having a conversation, whatever. And uh, because I, I, I meet a lot of uh, business owners because I deliver potato chips. So there might be some time where I'm getting a signature and they'll tell me what their name is. And it might mean uh, God is love or uh, I am loved by God, whatever it is. And I'm like, oh, are you a Christian? And they're like, nope. I'm actually a uh, Sikh or whatever it is. And then I'm like, oh, okay, well, where do you, where, where's your temple? And they'll tell me where it is. I'm like, yeah, you should come to our church. Come check out our church. I'll, I'll buy you a free coffee. Sir, coffee's free. So, but I said, you know, you'd be my honored guest. You'd be my special guest. And I'd love to have you at our church. That's it. And then some people would be like, yeah, if you ever want to go out for coffee, uh, that'd be awesome as well. So that kind of thing. Those are the kind of conversations that I have with people. Hopefully that helps. But that's that's what's happened in the past year. So I dove into the Bible day and night for basically a year. And I feel like it helped me cleanse my mind. It helped dissipate all those desires and this basically feels like it disintegrated them because some people will be like, well, does that mean you stop sinning and all this kind of stuff? On one hand, I want to say yes, but the second you say yes, that sounds hypocritical or it sounds like you're saying that you'll never sin again. 
And it's a weird thing. It's like, it's almost like saying, um, I'm never going to choke on water again for the rest of my life. Now, will there be times that I will choke on water? Yeah, probably sometime in the future if I go to Mexico and I go swimming and I end up swall taking a big gulp of water, whatever it is, I could be choking on a little bit of water, you know, whatever. That could happen somewhere in the future. I could sin somewhere in the future. It's very possible, very possible on the scale. If you if you were to have a scale from one to a hundred, you'd probably say ninety nine percent there's a chance that I am going to sin between now and the day that I die. So what I do is I take a chunk which is a 24 hour period. And I say today, Lord, help me to understand you and know you just a little bit more. Help me capture every thought that enters into my mind today. In this 24 hour period, I, I serve you, I worship you, I love you, all this kind of stuff for today. I don't worry about tomorrow. I don't think about three weeks from now, four weeks, five weeks, whatever it is. I'm like, Keep me from temptation today, Lord. This is what I do every single day. Because I'm cognizant of that. So this is how I operate on a on a 24-hour basis today. And I might make another video about this. If, if, if I get some kind of interest on this video, if you like this video, some people might think, well, this is kind of random. You're kind of all over the place. Hopefully you can understand the concept that the more you saturate your mind in the in the word the more your peripheral vision opens up to i want to say the spiritual realm as well because now your your mind is enhanced in a way that you're you're sensitive now to what the holy spirit is saying to you and you're trying to be more cognizant of not offending people and just loving everyone and not being pushed around either. There's a difference. There, there are some people that are like, well, um, I'll never read the Bible or whatever it is. And they're a Christian. And I would challenge them on that. I would say, oh, why do you not read your Bible at all? Period. Zero. I would just ask some questions. So I, I push in certain areas because I want people to get closer to the Lord. But in other things, if they're like, man, I, I'm, I'm struggling with smoking or uh, maybe I drink too much, whatever it is. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I don't care. I don't care, honestly. I don't care what you do in your private life or whatever it is. As long as you love the Lord and uh, you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, died, rose again on the third day. I believe the Holy Spirit is working in that person's life. And my job is to come alongside and say, if you need a hand with anything, if you want to go out for coffee, whatever it is, I make myself available. But it's not my job to fix anyone. It's, it was a hard enough time for me to try and fix myself until I realized that I can't fix myself. Only the Holy Spirit can. And again, it goes back to this, reading the Bible. And I love reading the King James Version because I feel like <clears throat> it helps cleanse your mind. I just, I feel it so strong in me that uh, it's almost like you can't go back. You can't unsee what you've seen already happen in your life. And ho hopefully that makes sense. Now, when, when you ask the question, you know, what is your prayer life like? It could get better in the mornings. Um, should spend a little bit more time in prayer instead of just diving into the word. And you could pose an argument. Some people will be like, well, I don't read, but I pray during the day. I'll, I'll, I'll pull over and I'll say little prayers here and there. And... I'll say I read and pray at the same time um, throughout the day. But to 
spend time and just say, okay, I'm, I'm not reading. I'm not having any, any distractions or anything like this. This is what I need to do right now. This is what I feel I need to do more of. Jesus did it. Every morning he woke up and he went out to a place of prayer. So why not me? Basically, at the end of the day. So thank you for that. That is a challenge for me to just spend more time alone focusing on the Lord and praying with him and then diving into the word. It's kind of kind of what I, uh, I plan on doing moving forward instead of just consuming the Bible all day and all night. So that's kind of the next level, if you will, is to have a re regular prayer time set aside first thing in the morning. So hopefully that makes sense. And I'm totally not against, obviously not against prayer. If somebody says, hey, can you pray for me for this? I'm like the first one to pray for that person. So I, I, I love prayer. I love it when people pray, all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, because there are some people that say we, you know, healing isn't for today, all this kind of stuff. I don't, I don't believe that for a second. I, I believe that we should be praying for people if they have um, a sickness, something that's bugging them, whatever it is, whether spiritually, physically, whatever. I am all over that to pray for that person. I believe that one hundred percent. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you got something out of this random lengthy video where I just kind of go all over the map this morning. But hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insight of how I think and how I move and all this kind of stuff. If you got something out of this, feel free to subscribe to this channel. Feel free to comment, share your thoughts your feelings, all that good stuff. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.